In a story that intertwines tragedy with an unexpected twist of fate, we delve into the life of a man who wronged his wife profoundly, yet an extraordinary event at her funeral shifted the narrative entirely. Once a quaint urban town, now engulfed by the sprawling expanse of a modern metropolis, continued to harbor the heart and soul of a close-knit community. Despite the advent of contemporary amenities like three-story residences equipped with hot water, swathes of the town retained their old-world charm, nestled within blocks of historical homes. This setting, marked by its rich tapestry of community life and somber events, became the backdrop for a tale that unfolded in the local cemetery. The story centers around Giselle, a woman whose roots ran deep into the town soil. Born and raised in this very community, Giselle's life was intertwined with its people. After finishing her education in the local school, she joined her family's thriving business. The town expected Giselle to chase the allure of the city life following her success, but she defied these expectations. Despite others' judgments and mistakes, Giselle's heart remained with her townsfolk, to whom she extended financial aid and donations, including vital resources to the local school, from notebooks to sponsoring graduations. Giselle's life took a dramatic turn when she married Samuel, a mysterious foreigner. Their union was celebrated with great pomp in the town, but Samuel's arrival marked a change in Giselle. Initially, she began withdrawing her support for the community, especially when others were around, although she continued her philanthropy in secret. During a visit to an elderly woman in the hospital, a moment of profound revelation occurred, hinting at Giselle's pregnancy, a fact unbeknownst to her until that poignant encounter. The narrative darkens with Samuel's transformation post-marriage. His initial kindness faded, revealing a desire to control Giselle's wealth. He restricted her charitable activities and assumed control over her assets, under the guise of love. This manipulation extended to their household and business, where Samuel contributed nothing, insisting they hire others for necessary tasks. As their family grew, so did Samuel's grip on Giselle's properties, driving a wedge between him and his family. Tragedy struck when Giselle and her children fell severely ill, leading to their premature demise under mysterious circumstances. It was revealed that they had been poisoned, with suspicion cast upon Samuel, who had conveniently left town. Upon his return, Samuel feigned ignorance and hastily arranged the funeral, raising the town's suspicions further. In a miraculous turn of events during the funeral, attended by the whole town in homage to Giselle's contributions, an old woman noticed Giselle's hand move. This discovery led to the realization that Giselle was not dead. Her subsequent recovery in the hospital allowed her to annul the marriage, regain her freedom, and reclaim her assets. This narrative, steeped in intrigue and resilience, underscores the profound impact of community support and the unexpected twists of fate that can reclaim justice from the jaws of tragedy. After watching this story, what do you think of? Then there is an another story about an infant's coffin. Let's expect what will happen. In the dim light of early morning, Melvin and his four younger cousins embarked on a heart-wrenching journey to the cemetery. Silence enveloped the SUV, a testament to the gravity of their task, to exhume the grave of Melvin's recently deceased child. Upon arrival, the group, armed with shovels and diggers, made their way to the freshly covered grave. These robust men, fueled by a mixture of determination and sorrow, managed to uncover the small white coffin in record time. Inside the grave, two cousins carefully lifted the coffin onto solid ground with assistance from the others. Melvin, a distinguished 35-year-old army officer, approached and opened the coffin, unprepared for the sight that awaited him. A doll lay beside his child, a poignant symbol of what could have been. This discovery led Melvin to reflect on his past, particularly his encounter with Rosa through her best friend, Maria, whom Melvin was engaged to at the time. Rosa was a woman of stunning beauty, with long, jet-black hair and a physique that caught Melvin's eye despite his commitment to Maria. Upon learning of Melvin's status as a high-ranking, affluent army officer, Rosa became infatuated, convinced he was the ideal partner for her. Cunningly, she obtained Melvin's phone number and initiated contact. Rosa, no stranger to the art of seduction, was adept at capturing the attention of men. Melvin, captivated by her during their first meeting, became her next conquest. Rosa's persistence paid off quickly, and after just a few phone calls, Melvin found himself agreeing to meet her. 
This backstory provides a richer context to the heartbreak and complex relationships that led to the moment of the exhumation. The discovery of the doll in the coffin not only symbolizes the loss of a child but also marks the culmination of a series of events shaped by desire, betrayal, and the quest for love. The following weekend, Melvin and Rosa's infatuation for each other deepened. Melvin was captivated by Rosa's breathtaking beauty, while Rosa was drawn to Melvin's affluent lifestyle and social standing. As their relationship blossomed, Melvin began to distance himself from Maria, causing her great distress. Maria, feeling bewildered by Melvin's sudden coldness, sought comfort in Rosa. Despite consoling Maria and suggesting that Melvin might simply be preoccupied, Rosa secretly reveled in the success of her endeavors to enchant Melvin. Unbeknownst to Maria, the relationship between Rosa and Melvin had rapidly progressed, culminating in a grand wedding just six months after their first encounter. Maria was completely oblivious to their nuptials until she received a phone call from a friend informing her of the event. Initially, Maria dismissed the news as an April Fool's joke, given the timing of the call. However, when another friend confirmed the wedding, the harsh reality hit Maria. She was overwhelmed with disbelief and heartache, her anguish so profound that she isolated herself, grappling with feelings of betrayal and sorrow. Maria reminisced about the times she had supported Rosa, providing her with shelter and sustenance for two years during a difficult period in Rosa's life. Maria had always treated Rosa not just as a friend, but as a younger sister, making Rosa's actions feel like a profound betrayal. In the early years of their marriage, Rosa relished in her new luxurious lifestyle, supported by Melvin's wealth. She opened a large boutique, fulfilling her dreams of affluence and social prominence. However, the couple soon faced adversity from Melvin's mother, Angelina, who was deeply concerned about their failure to conceive after five years of marriage. Being Melvin's only parent and given the significance of lineage in their culture, Angelina's desire for grandchildren to continue the family legacy became a source of tension. She openly criticized Melvin, warning him of the dishonor he would bring to his ancestors if he failed to produce an heir. Initially, Melvin attempted to brush off his mother's demands, but Angelina's persistence became a formidable challenge for the couple, casting a shadow over their once blissful union. Angelina was often found in tears during her phone conversations with Melvin, imploring him with a desperation that touched the core of her being. She longed to cradle her grandchildren in her arms before her time on this earth came to an end. Despite Melvin's attempts to explain the situation, he emphasized to his mother that neither Rosa nor he was to blame for their inability to conceive, it was simply an unfortunate twist of destiny. Yet, Angelina's insistence knew no bounds. She pressured him relentlessly, urging him to sever ties with Rosa and seek a new partner, someone she deemed capable of bearing children. She was convinced that Rosa was the root of their fertility issues. As time marched on, Melvin found himself gradually bending under the weight of his mother's persistent demands. Angelina's campaign against Rosa was multifaceted, she didn't hesitate to confront Rosa directly, taunting her over her inability to conceive and accusing her of ensnaring Melvin with witchcraft. Despite Rosa's fiery retorts, urging Angelina to respect their autonomy and cease her meddling, her defenses were no match for Angelina's razor-sharp barbs. Angelina even went as far as to label Rosa a gold digger masquerading her affection for Melvin. The tension reached a tipping point until one serene Friday evening. Melvin, who served as the commander of an army cantonment in a distant town and seldom spent time at home, returned to celebrate the weekend with Rosa. Following a sumptuous dinner, Rosa, with a radiance only happiness could bestow, teased Melvin with some news. Melvin, wearing a smile, hazarded a guess about her boutique success. However, Rosa's revelation was far more personal and joyous, she was pregnant, a fact confirmed by her doctor the previous day. Melvin's reaction was pure, unadulterated joy. He swept Rosa into his arms, showering her with kisses and declarations of love, their laughter and giggles filling the room with warmth. It was, without a doubt, their most blissful moment together. Upon sharing the news with Angelina the following day, her response was unexpectedly warm and congratulatory, a stark contrast to her previous demeanor. Angelina's praise for Rosa flowed generously, marking a significant shift in their relationship. With Rosa's pregnancy progressing, Melvin made a conscious effort to be more present at home, 
taking special care of Rosa and their unborn child. Each morning greeted them with tender inquiries about the baby's well-being, to which Rosa would respond with a knowing smile, hinting at the baby's gender with a playful, just wait and see, darling. For months into Rosa's pregnancy, Melvin's routine return home was met with an unusual but pleasant surprise, signaling yet another chapter in their evolving family story. Upon Melvin's entrance, the room was instantly brought to life as approximately twelve guests rose to their feet in unison, greeting him with a chorus of warm welcomes. Colonel Melvin reciprocated their kindness with a heartfelt acknowledgement before turning his attention to Rosa, whose radiant smile illuminated the room. Standing proudly by his side, he leaned in, curiosity coloring his tone as he whispered to her, inquiring about the reason behind the grand celebration. Rosa, with a playful glint in her eyes, cleared her throat dramatically, eliciting a wave of laughter from the guests with her exaggerated gesture. She then shared the thrilling news with Melvin in a voice brimming with excitement, just two days prior, she had undergone an ultrasound scan, and the medical team had joyfully confirmed that they were expecting a boy. Her words were still hanging in the air when Melvin, unable to contain his joy, enveloped her in a warm embrace and sealed their happiness with a passionate kiss. The guests erupted into applause, celebrating the couple's love and the announcement of their upcoming bundle of joy. As the applause faded, Rosa, still standing, gracefully transitioned into the formal opening of the gender reveal party. She delivered a heartfelt speech, expressing her deep love for Melvin and acknowledging his love in return, which once again drew applause from the audience, comprising primarily Rosa's closest friends and business associates. The celebration continued as Rosa, accompanied by her younger sister Dorothy, retreated to the kitchen. They soon emerged, bearing trays laden with a sumptuous array of local delicacies, fried chicken, salads, desserts, and sliced cakes, complemented by bottles of wine, fruit juice, and yogurt. The sisters served the guests with warmth and hospitality, ensuring everyone was well-fed and content, all against the backdrop of soft, romantic music that added to the intimate atmosphere of the party. Fast forward five months, and the time had arrived for Rosa to bring their child into the world. Melvin had made a heartfelt promise to stand by Rosa's side during the crucial week of delivery. However, just two days into the week, an unexpected call from his superior demanded his presence at the army cantonment the next day due to an emergency. With a heavy heart, Melvin bid Rosa a safe delivery and departed. Two days later, Rosa informed Melvin over the phone that she had decided to travel to the distant capital city for the delivery, believing that it offered the best medical facilities for her needs. Upon her arrival, she checked into a hotel and reassured Melvin of her safety, promising to update him post-delivery. Tragically, the following night, Rosa's call to Melvin was one of despair, through tears, she conveyed the heartbreaking news of their baby's loss during childbirth. Melvin was devastated, rendered speechless by the sudden turn of events. After a moment of stunned silence, he managed to gather his composure, offering words of consolation to Rosa in their time of unimaginable grief, Rosa gently reminded everyone that as long as there is life, there remains hope. It was Melvin who had the heart-wrenching task of informing his mother and other family members about the tragic news, leaving them enveloped in sorrow. Angelina, particularly, was overwhelmed by grief, mourning the loss of what would have been her first grandchild, and notably, a grandson, which held special significance in their family traditions. In accordance with their customs, Melvin and his kin organized a vigil to honor the young soul and awaited Rosa's arrival with the little one's remains. Rosa appeared the following day, her arms cradling a tiny white coffin, yet she brought with her a request that no one lay eyes on the child. She explained that the hospital had sealed the coffin, strictly advising against its opening. The vigil carried on into the afternoon, eventually transitioning into a funeral procession that made its way from their home to the final resting place of the baby in the cemetery. Melvin, visibly distraught, relied on the support of friends as he performed the heartrending task of lowering his child's coffin into the grave. Rosa was inconsolable, her tears flowing freely throughout the ceremony. In the days that followed, a sense of unease began to settle over Angelina and several of Melvin's relatives. They couldn't shake the feeling that there was something amiss with the entire situation surrounding the burial. Determined to uncover the truth, they resolved to investigate further. Shortly after the burial, Melvin and Rosa returned to town. 
However, an urgent call from Angelina beckoned Melvin back to the village without delay. Upon his return, he was met by a congregation of family members, signaling a serious discussion was about to take place. Angelina, taking a leading role in the gathering, voiced her concerns about the peculiar circumstances surrounding the baby's burial, a sentiment that was shared by everyone present. Despite Melvin's initial resistance, the collective insistence on exhuming the coffin left him feeling cornered and eventually, he acquiesced to their wishes. Angelina persuaded Melvin to remain in the village to witness the exhumation firsthand. That night, under the guise of being summoned for an urgent duty by his superiors, Melvin informed Rosa he would not be returning until the following evening. Thus, under the cover of early morning, Melvin and a group of men made their way to the cemetery to exhume the coffin. As Melvin braced himself and opened the coffin, what they discovered inside was beyond anything they could have anticipated. In an astonishing turn of events that defied all logic, the anticipated discovery of a corpse within the confines of a coffin was replaced by the bewildering find of a large doll, meticulously dressed to mimic a baby. This bizarre revelation sent Melvin into an uncontrollable fury, incredulous at Rose's audacity to deceive him for the duration of what was believed to be a nine-month pregnancy. The question of whether Rosa perceived him as utterly naive plagued his thoughts as anger bubbled within him. Without a moment's delay, Melvin stormed out, propelling himself into his car with fervor, and embarked on a swift journey home, intent on confronting Rosa about the elaborate ruse. He left the bewildered trio of men behind, standing in disbelief amidst the doll and coffin. Upon his return, a mere two hours later, Melvin found Rosa, unsuspecting and on the verge of departing for her boutique. Her surprise at his premature return was evident, and as she moved to embrace him, Melvin recoiled, repulsed by the deception. So, you birthed a doll instead of a child. Melvin accused, his voice laden with betrayal. Rosa's reaction was one of sheer astonishment, her face draining of color as the reality of her secret unraveling before her eyes. Without hesitation, Rosa collapsed to her knees, gripping Melvin's legs as she began her confession. She divulged her deep-seated fears of losing Melvin to another due to her inability to conceive. This crippling fear had driven her to fabricate her pregnancy, employing increasingly sophisticated prosthetics to mimic the growth of a baby bump. In a desperate bid to maintain the illusion, Rosa ventured to the capital city, an unfamiliar territory where her deception went unnoticed, to orchestrate a fictitious childbirth followed by the supposed demise of the child, culminating in the procurement of a doll for the burial. I did all this out of love, Rosa implored, her voice breaking with emotion. Melvin, however, remained unmoved by Rosa's plea, his mind reeling from the extent of her deception. After a moment of contemplation, he delivered his final verdict, sparing Rosa from legal repercussions but severing their relationship unequivocally. We're done, he declared, his voice resolute. Rosa's pleas fell on deaf ears as Melvin exited, leaving her in a state of despair. In the aftermath, Rosa, engulfed in sorrow, vacated the premises at dawn, seeking solace in her sister's apartment. Meanwhile, Melvin pursued a quiet divorce and, in a gesture of repentance, approached Maria with a heartfelt apology. He laid bare the entirety of Rosa's deception, expressing his regret for being ensnared by her manipulation. His earnest plea for forgiveness was met with Maria's contemplative silence, requesting time to process the revelations. Three days of anxious waiting culminated in Maria's decision, which she communicated to Melvin, marking the beginning of a new chapter in their lives. Maria knew deep down she was not in a place to extend forgiveness or consider reconciling with him. The betrayal she endured was unspeakable, he had shattered her trust by engaging in an affair with none other than her closest companion, and to add insult to injury, he chose to completely cut off all communication with her. Maria deserved so much more, and with time, she came to understand that Melvin's romantic involvement with Rosa was actually a covert blessing. As she ended the phone call, a gradual smile began to bloom across her face. Initially, she felt as though she had lost both a best friend and a fiancé, a double blow that seemed unbearable. However, she slowly recognized that fate had, in its own mysterious way, cleansed her life of two individuals who only brought her pain and toxicity. Indeed, wasn't this turn of events somewhat of a miracle? If you were in Maria's shoes, grappling with the aftermath of Melvin's betrayal and the loss of a close friend, 
How would you navigate the path to forgiveness, if at all? Would you find it within yourself to forgive Melvin for the profound hurt he caused? We're eager to hear your thoughts and perspectives on this matter. Please feel free to share your comments below. After watching this story, what do you think of? Then there is an another story about a funeral. Let's expect what will happen. A Johnny and his young daughter, Amira, shared an unbreakable bond that was deeply rooted in love and mutual admiration. Tragically, Ajani's life came to a premature end when Amira was only five years old, leaving a void in her heart. At his funeral, Amira, in a poignant moment of farewell, approached her father's casket to give him one last embrace. This tender gesture unexpectedly caused a stir among the mourners, prompting a collective gasp. Born into a humble family in Ethiopia, Ajani was a man whose spirit was ignited by ambition and a deep-seated desire to achieve greatness. From a young age, he was spellbound by the artistic endeavors of his father, a dedicated painter whose commitment to his craft inspired Ajani. His father's unfulfilled aspiration of establishing a renowned art gallery haunted Ajani, fueling his resolve to realize the dreams that his father could not. Despite the loving environment provided by his parents, Ajani's family faced significant financial challenges, casting a shadow of hardship over their lives. Determined to break the cycle of poverty, Ajani embarked on a journey filled with hope and tenacity. He was well aware that the road ahead would be fraught with challenges, yet he remained steadfast in his conviction to triumph over adversity. Ajani's initial foray into the workforce led him to a construction company, where he toiled as a laborer, driven by the promise of consistent wages to support his artistic ambitions. However, the harsh reality of unmet promises and unpaid wages soon disillusioned him, prompting Ajani to seek new opportunities elsewhere. His subsequent employment at a local bakery similarly ended in disappointment, as he once again faced the familiar sting of broken promises and financial instability. Despite these setbacks, Ajani's spirit was unbroken. Each job, while challenging, served to reinforce his determination not to lose sight of his ultimate objective, to become a renowned artist. It was during these trying times that Ajani made the pivotal decision to fully embrace his passion for art. With newfound resolve, Ajani rented a modest studio space, transforming it into a haven of creativity and expression. He dedicated himself to his art, capturing the vibrant essence of his surroundings and a complex tapestry of human emotion through his paintings. As his artwork began to captivate and garner admiration from the community, Ajani's paintings found eager buyers, bolstering his confidence and affirming his path as an artist. Ajani's journey from struggling to make ends meet to becoming a celebrated artist is a testament to the indomitable human spirit. Through determination, resilience, and an unwavering commitment to his craft, Ajani not only honored his father's legacy but also carved out his own path to success, leaving an indelible mark on the world of art embarking on a journey marked by ambition and dreams, a pivotal moment unfolded when a young woman named Solana, whose dark skin glowed with an inner radiance and whose smile could enchant the most stoic of hearts, casually strolled past Johnny's studio. The studio's exterior, adorned with vibrant and captivating artwork, piqued her curiosity, drawing her into the realm of Ajani's creative essence. The depth and ambition palpable in Ajani's drawings were irresistible, prompting Solana to step into the studio, where she was immediately taken aback by the sheer talent on display. With eyes brimming with awe and admiration, Solana approached Ajani, lavishing praise upon his artwork for its extraordinary nature. She then posed a request, asking if Ajani would capture her essence through his art. Ajani, thrilled by the request, eagerly began sketching, his pencil dancing across the paper, meticulously encapsulating Solana's beauty. Upon presenting the completed portrait to Solana, her reaction, a radiant smile spreading joyously across her face, marked the beginning of a profound connection between them. Solana soon became a fixture in Ajani's studio, immersing herself in the art world alongside him. As they spent hours together, a deep bond formed through shared hopes, dreams, and vulnerabilities, transcending their initial connection over art into a blossoming romance. On a rain-soaked evening, within the comforting confines of the studio, Ajani mustered the courage to declare his love for Solana. Her response, filled with surprise and affection, revealed that she too harbored feelings for him. This mutual confession of love led them to exchange vows six months later, embarking on a lifelong journey of companionship. 
However, their bliss was not without its trials. They faced heartache as Solana endured painful miscarriages, casting a shadow over their dreams of starting a family. Yet, Ajani stood by Solana as an unwavering source of support, embodying the strength needed to navigate these challenging times together. Their perseverance and love were eventually rewarded when, after two years, they welcomed a beautiful baby girl, Ramirez, into the world. Named meaning, Princess, Ramirez was a beacon of hope and joy for the couple. As Ramirez grew, it became apparent that she was exceptionally gifted. Exhibiting signs of genius at merely three years of age, her parents marveled at her intelligence and unique abilities. Ajani and Solana nurtured Ramirez's talents, encouraging her to explore various interests and supporting her in every endeavor. Together, they formed a family united not just by love and shared experiences, but by an unwavering commitment to fostering growth and creativity in one another. Amira's life was a tapestry of thrilling adventures, each day unfurling with the promise of new activities that sparkled with excitement. She navigated through the world with eyes wide open, marveling at its wonders with a heart brimming with joy. However, unknown to her, this boundless happiness was on the brink of a dramatic halt. This turning point occurred on a day that should have been filled with nothing but joy, Amira's fifth birthday. On that fateful day, the backyard of their home transfo remed into an arena of joyous screams and laughter as the family, including Amira, her mother Solana, and her father Ajani, indulged in a spirited game of tag. The air was vibrant with the sounds of their mirth until an unexpected silence fell. Ajani, in the midst of the chase, suddenly stumbled and fell, his complexion turning ashen, his face devoid of any expression. Amira, a mere child of five, found herself rushing to her father's side, her young heart pounding with fear. Daddy, daddy, she cried out, her voice quivering with the weight of her dread. Solana, equally startled and concerned, quickly joined them, her eyes mirroring the fear etched on Amira's face. After a tense few moments, Ajani regained consciousness, offering reassurances that all was well. Despite his attempts to calm their worries, Solana and Amira couldn't shake off the ominous feeling that loomed over them, a feeling that, regrettably, proved to be accurate. A subsequent incident occurred one bright morning in Ajani's studio when he collapsed yet again, this time with alarming severity. Panicked and desperate, Solana and Amira whisked him away to the hospital, yearning for answers. The diagnosis they received was a devastating blow, Ajani was suffering from a terminal illness that demanded urgent treatment. The news shattered their worlds, leaving Solana in tears, the reality of the situation weighing heavily upon her. In the months that followed, Ajani's condition deteriorated. One evening, as Solana and Amira visited his hospital room, they found him significantly weaker. Unable to contain her emotions, Solana's grief morphed into anger, her tears laced with frustration as she implored Ajani to fight, to cling to life for the sake of their family. Ajani, witnessing the depth of her sorrow, felt his own heartbreak mirrored in her pleas. Overcome, Solana stepped away, her tears unceasing as she left Amira behind with Ajani. In those final moments, Amira, with wisdom beyond her years, understood the inevitable. Holding her father's hand, she tenderly kissed it, a silent goodbye. They shared tears, enveloped in love, until Ajani's breaths grew faint, ultimately coming to a halt. Amira, heart heavy with sorrow, released her father's hand, accepting his departure from this world. The hospital's call to Solana delivered the somber news of Ajani's passing. Flooded with regret and remorse for not being by his side, Solana's grief was compounded by guilt, her tears a testament to the depth of her loss. On the solemn day of the funeral, Solana was engulfed in a torrent of grief, her tears cascading endlessly as she stood vigil by the casket, grappling with the immense void left by her husband's departure. The pain of bereavement seemed almost palpable, casting a heavy shadow over her heart. Yet, in stark contrast, amidst the enveloping sorrow, Amira harbored a tranquil serenity. She found solace in reminiscing about the profound connection she had shared with her father throughout his battle with illness. It was a bond fortified by mutual strength and love, marked by precious moments that had deepened their relationship in ways she never imagined possible. As the time came to commit Johnny's body to the earth, a poignant realization dawned on Amira. With unwavering resolve, she sought her mother's consent to embrace her father one final time. Solana, 
deeply touched by her daughter's poignant wish, acquiesced. The assembly of mourners looked on in respectful silence, their hearts heavy, as Amira stepped forward to wrap her arms around her father's inert form. What transpired next was nothing short of miraculous. A sudden whirlwind erupted, its force swirling around the funeral, punctuating the somber atmosphere with an unexpected ferocity. This whirlwind, inexplicably focused on Amira, encircled her for a breathless thirty seconds. Onlookers let out gasps and screams, rooted to the spot in a mix of fear and awe. Yet, as quickly as it had appeared, the tempest abetted, revealing Amira, miraculously unscathed. The tears that had once streaked her cheeks were now replaced by a radiant smile, her laughter ringing out clear and true. In that moment, Amira felt an unshakable conviction in her heart, she interpreted the extraordinary phenomenon as her father's final act of farewell, a testament to his enduring love and presence in her life. This profound experience stayed with her, becoming a cherished tale that she would later share with her children and grandchildren, a testament to the enduring bond between them. This touching story invites us to reflect on the beauty of relationships that transcend the physical realm, reminding us of the power of love to provide comfort and reassurance in our moments of deepest despair. Feel free to share your thoughts on this poignant narrative below. That's all about our story, if you like this story, please like and subscribe to the channel and see you in the next story.